look at verses 36 through 39. And we're going to look at this prayer that Elijah prayed in verses 36 and 37. So 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 36 to 39, where we'll be, if you have your outline, we'll go ahead and say us a word of prayer and we'll get started. And after we pray, if anybody wouldn't mind reading the four or five verses or just if anybody wouldn't mind doing that for us, then we'll go through it and explain everything. Uh, Father, we, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being gracious. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us even through this day. Father, in our prayer, we still want to lift up those that are sick and going through difficult times. Lord, we want to lift up the family of uh, Sister Morris and Sister Davis, Lord, and Sister Bible. Just pray that you can bring home their brother-in-law safely, that the nurses and doctors can care for him. Yes, Certainly want to remember our own Reverend Brown, Lord, that you can ease his mind and comfort his heart. Yes. Father, going through the valley of derision, going through a difficult time, mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you can meet him in that situation. Mm -hmm. Lord, be with the doctors and the nurses, and that their eyes can be attentive, Father. Yes, that he can have people that care for him, all of them, mm -hmm. can have people that care for him that are tender and considerate. And Father, we pray for Brother Jones and his family. They have yes, some yes. illness as well. And God, we just ask that you would just continually touch and that you would bless in the name of Jesus. Yes. And Father, bless this church. Bless our study for tonight. Mm -hmm. And let your word, Father, touch our hearts and arrange the motion and direction of our lives. Mm -hmm. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 We appreciate all of you tonight. First Kings chapter 18. Verses 36 to 39. Kim, you ain't got to read. You ain't got to read. You ain't got to read. <laughs> if anybody want to read, it's just four verses. We can do two and two. Or if I, somebody want to read, I want four of them. Yes. Thirty. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. And Elijah the prophet came here and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, oh, and Israel, I'm sorry. Say, <laughs> brother, <laughs> we got you. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your work. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord of God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Last two verses, here we go. Verse 13, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt of the sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and they up the water that was in the tree. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is to God. Amen. 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 This is this is when it all came down. Eventually it will all come down. And we're going to look at this, this prayer that Elijah prayed. And then the last two verses, verses 38 and 39, these are the this is the results of that prayer. How God answered and showed himself to be the true the, the, the true God that they should serve. Now one thing to, to note is the reason that they are here, and, and we all know this, is because Israel as a whole had fallen into idolatry. Mm -hmm. They had left worshiping Jehovah, left worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel. And they began to worship an idol God called Baal. Mm -hmm. Baal was supposedly a God of rain, fertility. And so, okay, Elijah shows up. The real God, in essence, he was saying, instructed me to tell you that it's not going to rain. So if your God is a God that controls rain and fertility and the crops are going to bloom based on this, well, we shouldn't have any issue with your God showing himself more powerful than the God of Israel. So with that being said, rain to this point had not come down for how many years? Who remembers how many years it was? Three years. Three years. It's been three years. So rain had not come down for three years. 
Elijah was in hiding. After Elijah was in hiding, he was hiding under the nose of Jezebel's father, who was one of the main prophets of this idol god there. God finally said, all right, time to, time to go ahead and show himself. Elijah comes out of hiding. He bumps into, do you remember his name? He worked for King Ahab. He helped uh, over 100 prophets to hide. His name was Obadiah. Yes. And initially, I think it was Sister Tims who asked, is that the same Obadiah that wrote the book? And I said initially, yes, but as I continue to read more, they are unsure. Oh. Some commentaries lean on it probably was not, just someone who had the same name. Okay. But Obadiah had a high position in the cabinet of King Ahab. He was a righteous man, a one that loved the Lord, but the cabinet and the administration he was employed by were proponents of idol worship. So that's kind of a template of kind of a Christian being surrounded in the world. Mm -hmm. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. You can find yourself in environments at work, in environments in the community, in all kinds of places where you might be the one Christian. You might be the, the master's minority, as we say. So Obadiah says to, King, to, to the prophet Elijah, man, I can't go get King Ahab. If I go get him and bring him to you, and you then went and hid again, man, he'll kill me. <laughs> and so that shows us the heart of the king, one of the most wicked kings of this time. Elijah stays, King Ahab, they meet. As Ahab comes, he said, aren't you the one that's causing all this trouble in Jerusalem. Aren't you he that troubles the city, troubles the nation? Elijah responds, look at man, it ain't me. <laughs> it's you. Let's, let's just scratch where we is. Right. It's yeah. you and your father's house. All of y'all have been doing this stuff. Yeah. So they decided we're going to have, for lack of a better term, a contest. Let's find out which God is the real God that we should serve. Mm -hmm. We're going to both take turns and call on our prospective gods. I'm going to call on Jehovah. You can call on them. We're going to get an altar. We're going to get some bulls or some bullets. We're going to put them on the altar. We're going to call. And whichever one of these two gods, mine that I serve or Baal that you serve, whichever one answers by fire, that's the God that we're going to serve. Mm -hmm. So we looked at last week. Boy, they went through. They jumping all up on the out altar. Yeah. Cutting themselves, hollering. He even, I, I believe, I believe he poking fun at him. Yeah. What he was saying. <laughs> I believe he was poking fun at him. He, he had a sense of humor. Call out. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he on the journey. Call him out. Maybe he can't hear you. Maybe his cell phone sitting a week in that building he's there. Call, keep calling. Keep calling. <laughs> And he was fair. So he said, y'all can go first. He showed his fairness. He said, you can pitch with bull you want. You, you, you can go right here. And finally, we get to our current verse, which is the first verse, which is verse 36. Mm -hmm. It says, and it came to pass at the time of the evening, of the evening sacrifice, which is about 3 o'clock in the evening. Verse 36. That Elijah the prophet came in. He basically said, y'all, y'all, excuse me. Move, move, move out the way. Nobody has said nothing. No fire has come up. The clouds ain't even moved. Everything looks the same. And what Elijah did was, Elijah prayed. And you can say, and say, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. Now, who is Israel? Because I know Sister Davis read that. Who is Israel? What is Israel's original name? Jacob. Jacob. Mm -hmm. And for a hundred dollars. Okay. From Sister Turner. <laughs> All right. Why was Jacob's name changed? She, she gonna give you cash too. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord yeah. from the breaking of the you can cash at her, Sister Turner. That's why she she'll take that. You <laughs> can say. A hundred dollars worth of love. Amen. That's what I meant to say. 
And so his name was changed. He, he wrestled with names to the break of the day. And he said, no longer will you be called Jacob, which means surplanter, con artist, trickster. trickster. Yeah. Now your name shall be called Israel. And so when you read this in the, the God of Abraham, father of their faith, Isaac and Israel, that's who it's referring to. But we can see this is in verse 36 and 37. This is Elijah's prayer. If you have your outline, uh, that first bullet point under the prayer of Elijah, it says, uh, it, it, it reads, Elijah prayed before the altar of the Lord, but it was distinct from the praying of the prophets of Baal. There was no shouting, it was short, and there were no antics. When I say antics, he wasn't cutting himself and getting all this extra stuff, jumping up and down on the altar, none of that stuff. One thing we can see from his prayer is that the length and loudness of the prayer do not necessarily equate to the sincerity of the prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, that's just a good template for all of us to kind of incorporate. Mm -hmm. Surely when we pray or when we preach or when we go through God's word, it just stirs you up sometimes. Mm -hmm. You become passionate. There's nothing wrong with that. But passion or how long we'll say a person prays yeah. or how loud they get or how animated they become when they pray, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's sincere. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I've heard people pray for faith they should not be praying for. Yeah. Come on, Satan, give me all you got. Whoa. I'm going to stop you here. Well, he's coming. <laughs> Number one, you ain't gotta, he's going up and down the earth to and fro. See, yeah. you know, he can't devour. Yeah. Nowhere does the Bible tell us to invite him to That's come. Right. Yeah. The Bible says in the epistle of James, resist him yeah. 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 and he'll flee from you. Yeah. But, but a person can be so wound up in their prayer and so animated and you're like, well, that's got to be right. And now here you are in your prayer. Come on, Satan. We're going to stomp your head out. We're going to bind the enemy. All these folks trying to bind Satan up, you sure keep getting loose every Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And another thing you got to look at the word it says you can't bind Satan. There we go. Yeah. Human beings can't bound Satan whatsoever. The yeah. only one that can bound is the angel. Yeah, man. Yeah. The angel will bound Satan and cast him into the pit. So, so and as true. far as bounding him, that's impossible. We yeah. got we got to rebuke him. Like the yeah. angel did. The angel rebuked him over the body of Moses. He said, "The Lord rebuked you." He didn't say, "I rebuked you." Yeah. So the Lord He said, "The Lord rebuked you." The same thing with Jesus. When Jesus is coming out of the <clears throat> The coming from uh, Gethsemane and, and, and Satan was tempting him. He said, The Lord. Yeah. He didn't say I. So we got to take the I out of it. Yeah. And we got to put the Lord in. Because yeah, the Lord the only one that can take Satan and hold mm -hmm. him accountable. Not us. The yeah. Lord. Amen. And Amen. once again, you may hear some things to where a person's passion, but length and loudness in a prayer, in, in, in any prayer, don't necessarily mean it's true. Yeah. Amen. And so we're going to look at the three things, and you could have broken this prayer down to a whole bunch of different things. But mm -hmm. He prayed for the glory of God. He prayed for his testimony, about his testimony. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this last week. He prayed for revival. Yeah, man. That's what he prayed for. When, when I say he prayed for the glory of God, that comes from this phrase. He said, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Mm -hmm. This was their problem, right here. They did not believe and recognize Jehovah mm -hmm. as the God of Israel. Yeah. They recognized Baal. Yeah. King Ahab, his wife Jezebel, the prophets of Baal that they had, the prophets of the gold, the majority of the nation. They didn't have God as a priority. They did not give God any glory. The reason they were suffering is because they had fallen away from serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you take God off the throne in your life, that throne will not remain vacant. 
Yes, you, you, you put yourself there. I'm the captain of my own ship. I, I'm going to do it my way. Or you have some other thing that you're going to put in that place. But there's going to be some authority that you're going to refer to yourself or any other type of belief system that you're going to have as that authority that you're going to make a priority. Mm -hmm. right. Now, what does it mean to make something a priority? Just anybody. Put it over there. To put over, well, just a priority in general. Just if something is a priority, what is important? It's important. Your focus is on it. Uh -huh. It's important. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's important it to you. Press, takes precedent over. Takes precedent. Oh, somebody said something. What is it? Same thing. Like, what, what is it? Who is it that is the priority of our lives? Yeah. What, what, what is our focal point on? It, 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 is, it is a good thing to be determined, uh, to be focused, to have discipline, to, to learn a craft, to have discipline as an athlete, to, to, to learn the plays, to train, to, to eat right, to get up early, to stay up late, you know. Uh, if you're if you're teaching, working in the class, learning the lesson and learning it so that you can present it to your class or your students, these things are not inherently bad things. Yeah. Let me say that. But when all of your effort goes to these things, which are not may not be inherently bad, and you give no priority to God, yeah. when there's no glory given to you. I, I've had people ask me now. They were slightly joking. Let me say this, slightly joking before I go forward. You know, the Super Bowl this Sunday is church. We wish they had church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the Super Bowl at 7 o'clock at night. Like, <laughs> we had church that morning. They got a slightly joking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 here's a good one. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. You, you may have heard this. You know, Christmas on Sunday, we had church on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that should be a bonus, ain't it? That yeah. Christmas is on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I, I, I've seen people get into fights, close to fist fights, over these games, the, the football games, and the little handsets, and oh, yeah. the bang on their head, and yeah. one sitting there, one sitting. I just seen grown folk yeah. being, for, I mean, throwing the, I mean, but it's such a priority that to lose, it changes your whole mood. Yeah. That sometimes some people, their favorite sports team. They sports team move, man, they hold that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They say, man, I ain't. You know, they, they, they just check out, you know. Mm -hmm. But we gotta ask ourselves, who is it that's a priority? What is it that we give glory to? Who is it that we give glory to? The primary thing for the Christian, it should be God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he prayed, let it be known that you are God in Israel. Now, now, Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Please, somebody read that for us. The shepherds at night, it's dark. The angels show up. Jesus has just been. Mm -hmm. Glory to God and high goodwill towards me. Now, these are the angels that, that calm the shepherds down. Because you can imagine, pitch black sky, you're out there at night, you're watching the herd of sheep. Ain't no street lights. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no lights from your cell phone. It's dark out there. It's like being out in the country. <laughs> yeah. And it get dark at night. It's dark out there. Yeah. You know, ain't no porch lights on. Oh, it's dark on that little road. And out of nowhere, the angels show up and the sky lights up. Man, that's going to put a, a shock to your system. Mm -hmm. And they said, glory to God in the highest. Mm -hmm. Peace on earth. We, we've read this on Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. on the yeah. Goodwill toward me. Coincidentally, there can be no peace on earth and goodwill toward men yeah. <laughs> if there's not first a glory to God. Amen. That's right. Yeah. But we can see God should be glorified. God should be magnified. And Elijah prayed. He says, God, I want let it be known that you are the God that we should be giving glory to, not to the idol God of Baal. The next thing is he prayed for his testimony. Here's that section, I'm going read it. Not only let them know that you're God in Israel, but let them know that now this is all the people around him now, thousands of people around him, that I am your servant, 
and that I've done all these things according to or at your word. Mm -hmm. Lord, everything I've done, let them be, let them know these things were done because you wanted me to do it. These things were done because I'm your servant. These things were done because you're the one that instructed me where to go, what to do. That's going to be a widow. Go to the brook chair. I'm going to send the raven to give you food. Come out of hiding. Talk to, get on that. Everything I've done has been done. My testimony is I want everyone to know who I serve and who I live for, who I am instructed by. Isn't that a beautiful testimony to have? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. To know that my life is structured and ordered. And, and, and we'll be, you know, relative, well, we'll be clear as best we can by what's found in, in the Word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say as best we can because we're all aspiring to get better and better and better and better. And That's called Christian growth right there. Yes. So, yes. And the more your testimony becomes, that's somebody that just tries to do right. That's somebody that just tries to do. You know, people will even say this. Well, I ain't even going to call her because she's going to tell me the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know who to call who want to instruct you the right way. And you know who to call when they want to instruct you the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Listen, kids know who to call that's a responsible adult. Be like, no, I ain't going to call them. But they know them adults to call. Be like, well, she can't tell me that. <laughs> or he going to affirm me and my. There are some people that will affirm you in your wrong. And there are some people that will not affirm you when you're going the wrong way. But the point is, you know that based on their testimony. And so he wants his testimony to, to be such that he's a servant of God. That everything he's done is because he's been obedient to what God has said. Yeah. Now, to, to highlight that, I want us to look at the Old Testament passage in the book of Exodus. Let's look at Exodus chapter 32 and verse 26. Now, you got to understand context, context, context. God has called Moses up to the top of the mountain. Y'all, y'all saw Ten Commandments, didn't you? Y'all saw <laughs> how the cloud rested on the mountain. <laughs> it's eat the power. He's up there and he's giving him those commands written in stone with his own hand. I don't know what he said. You know what? You better get down there. I'm about to destroy all of them. The people, while Moses was away, they went to Aaron, his brother. They even referred to Moses in kind of a slang way. This Moses guy, <laughs> he's been gone too long. Make us a God that we can see. Aaron shows a bit of what we can call selfish ambition. Yeah. I mean, if y'all if y'all have me, I'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> no hesitation, no pause, no, that's my brother. No, 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 he's all right. Listen, bring me all your gold. And what did he melt it down and create down there? Okay. Go to God. Now, where do you think that thinking came from? Where had that been? Where Egypt. Egypt. In Egypt. In mm Egypt. -hmm. Egypt is representative of the world. This was a worldly way of thinking. They made a calf, a golden calf. That's the best you can do for God. <laughs> they were worshiping. And even as Moses came down, the people had gotten naked and all kinds. It's all in the chapter right here. And when Moses came down, he saw what was going on. In essence, he drew a line in the sand. And if you look at verse 26 of Exodus chapter 32, Mm -hmm. Moses says to them, then Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And it says, and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Your testimony should be such that people know whose side that you are on. Mm -hmm. Elijah prayed that the people would know whose side he was on. 
Yes, go ahead. Also, when we read the, when we read about the Bible, and this is uh, verse that you just said, we kind of like uh, can shine a mirror back on ourselves. Because what's that Wall Street in this country? Oh, the big bull thing they got up Yeah. That's the same yeah. thing. They yeah, wow. yeah. the whole money, that's where the oh, okay. all the wealth is and everything. So they, they kinda of worship in that golden worshiping money and that food up there. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Safe to say some of these larger corporations. Oh Lord, amen. Hey, we're tired. Still, we thirty minutes. I'm messing with you. Here, that's right. I'm messing with you. But no, no. When we look at this, is that we? He wanted them to know whose side he was on. We, we, we cannot. If you take a chameleon, whatever environment he's in, he adapts to that environment. Right. Christians can't afford to be chameleons in that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are distinct. Mm-hmm. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, you heard it said, love your family, love your neighbor. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Yeah. Bless them that curse you. Listen, that's a different way of living. Yeah. And when you live for him, you're going to stand out. Yeah. Right? Amen. 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 When you t- tell Sister Mike, tell me something that you have done at work. When somebody did you wrong, and nothing stopped you going stop you go. Ain't no telling how she handled it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, but, but listen, we, we know how the Bible instructs us to live. Is counteractive to the way the world lives. To to just to take the phrase of the scripture to love your enemies, that's not a normal course of action. Someone steps on your foot, the response is, "I'm gonna step on theirs." Mm-hmm. Someone hurts me, well, I'm gonna hurt. I'm gonna get them back in some way. But to live for the Lord, what it does is it shows that your testimony is that what you do is according to His word. Mm. That you are someone that serves and worships him. And when Moses came down from the mount, Moses saw what was going on. And he said, well, let's just let's just ask the question. Who is on the Lord's side? Yeah. Now, who remembers? And you, you got your Bibles open. What happened after that situation in Exodus chapter 32? Who can see right there? What happened after that? The tribe of Levi came. They took swords. <laughs> and uh, they, they killed them. Yeah. They destroyed all of the all of the male people destroyed anybody that did not come on the side of Moses. Of Moses and the Lord. Moses yeah. and the Lord. They destroyed just like the Lord told them to go in and destroy all the Canaanites. They didn't do that. And in this case, they slaughtered all of us. That's true. And then some of the ones that were left. He took that cow, munched it down, ground it up, and made him drink it. Yeah. yeah. As a judgment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like he's up on the mountain. He pleaded on their behalf, Lord, don't destroy them. Because what are the Egyptians going to say? You freed them to bring them out here and kill them yeah. on the mountain? Yeah. We've been telling people that you freeing us to come out here and worship you on the mountain. Yeah. So what would be, he said, well, you better fix it so I don't have to fix it. Yeah. And that is Moses in that phrase of what we highlighted. He said, who is on the Lord's side? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when we turn back to 1 Kings chapter 18, this is where Elijah, as he prayed, no fire has fallen. The prophets of Baal have had their several hours, all of their antics and cutting and shouting, and he's both fun at them. He prayed for God to get the glory, mm-hmm. that God is the God of Israel. He prayed about his personal testimony. I'm your servant. I've done all these things at your word. Verse 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people, that this people may know that you're the Lord God mm-hmm. and that you have turned their hearts 
back again. again. That is what we call revival. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Pastor, can you back up just go ahead. Um, a little bit on um, on B? Um, you know, um, what kept jumping at me was a library was not a shadow. Of course. You know, mm -hmm. and, and then when you look at what Mark 838 says about being ashamed, you know, the real shame. Mm -hmm. you know, can I read that? Yeah, please, please, please. Mark, Mark chapter 8. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8 and Mark, verse 38, quote, whoever is ashamed of me and my word mm -hmm. is this adulterous and sinful nation. Of him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his angels. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful. <laughs> that verse was taught to me by my mother in the eighth grade when I went to Dunbar Junior High School. We had to walk to school and we walked back as group service. On the way there, we stopped to get some nachos at the little corner store, get to school, come home. And I had a little girlfriend. <laughs> Juana Lewis was her name. She played basketball. She was taller than me, too. So just, <laughs> oh, oh, all those situations. I never had. And, and I remember my mama let me get out the phone with me. Could they give you phone number? I don't know anybody. Yeah. Uh, no, you got to get permission to get phone number. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, Could I give her my phone? I gave her phone number. And we were sitting down, we had a Bible study, and the phone rang. She picked up, hello? Who? The one? Oh, hey, we had Bible study. Why don't we tell you we have no Bible study? We got Bible study. You don't be telling nobody we got Bible study. And she quoted that verse. She said, the Bible says, if you're ashamed of me before me, mm -hmm. right? I'll be ashamed of you before my father, my name is when I'm in heaven. Yeah. And then I never forgot, because I was like, don't be telling nobody we have no That's yeah. <laughs> not cool. Yeah. Like, Come on. I, I never forgot that. Yeah. And in this case, thank you for bringing it up. Elijah wasn't ashamed. Yeah. Amen. He was, he, he said, I would want people to know I'm doing these things on behalf of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that real continue with that, that is a lesson for us as Christians, not to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Don't be ashamed of who you serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, because what the world ain't ashamed. Yeah, what exactly. Is the world, right. the world so can't, right. can't do, it, it can do everything that it said it can do. So why are you ashamed? Why should you be ashamed of your God? Amen. The pagans ain't ashamed of their God. You know, and they throw it in your face. Mm -hmm. they, they, they shove it down your throat. Yeah. They, they, they do, they keep those eyelids open like so, and you can't blink. It's mm -hmm. everywhere, and they dare you to say something. Oh, well, guess what? If you're ashamed, you won't say anything. Amen. You Amen. Keep your mouth shut, and you go around your little happy self until they come and get you and your children. Yeah. And that's what they say they're going to do anyway. Amen. Yeah. So we shouldn't be, they're not ashamed. Right. We shouldn't be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed. We should be ashamed. We should be loud as we can. You know? And then that last day, he prayed for what? For their hearts mm -hmm. to turn, yeah. turn back. To yeah. God. Because their hearts had drifted away from that. And, and listen, people, any one of none of us are immune to that. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. None of us are immune to any yeah. of us, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But none of us, uh, w once we get to a certain point where we're growing, we're progressing, we get stronger. If you take your hands off yeah. of that determination, it will regress. Oh yeah. yeah. You don't just get strong and just naturally stay. It's like working out. You don't just work out, eat right, then you just go back to doing what you were doing and think you always gonna have that strength and that vitality. It doesn't work that way. You have to mm -hmm. continue to press <laughs> and to maintain. Yes, sir. And so here we can see revival, let me say this too. It is a turning of the heart back to God. Amen. Right. Relive, live again, revive. Revival is not just for the wicked. Amen. Amen. Revival is also for the weary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. 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 Yes, sir. It's not just that there's this huge life change and you just so backslid. That certainly is a possibility, and that is what revival revival can assist and help to bring your heart back to God again. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just begin to get weary and then you get a little bit apathetic mm -hmm. and a little bit careless. Yeah. It's a more subtle drifting away as opposed to a direct fall off. It's like going fishing and not having an anchor down and you thought you were by the bank 
but the current has just slowly drifted you away. Mm -hmm. And you look at where you are versus where you used to be, you need to get back there. Yeah. And that can happen in your heart. The revival is for the wicked, but it's also for the weary. Mm -hmm. Now, notice, he prayed for their hearts to be turned back to God again. He did not pray for rain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He prayed. He's, he's reaching the root of the problem. The real issue is a heart problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Their issue wasn't they didn't have any water. I mean, that's a supplementary issue. Yeah. That's a branch off the tree. The issue that they were having was that their heart had wandered from God. Mm -hmm. And God caused a drought as punishment on them because they had wandered away from Him. Now, we, we, we may not see it this way, but people, that's love. Yeah. That God would not let you get too far away from him without showing you the signs that you get away from me. Yeah. And I'm sure there's been multiple things that God has done up to this point. And now sometimes I got to bring out the belt. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Now, no, not, no, people don't do this no more. Yeah. I was raised different. <laughs> I didn't have time out. <laughs> what? Yeah, had, what, what no, put your face in the corner. No. Wow. No. Mm -hmm. You got war out. What time out? We got spicy. Corporal punishment. I said that way. Mm. And Lord, with grandma. She's a bit of risk these days. <laughs> but it kept you out of trouble. Yeah. Some of the stuff we got going on now wasn't going on in school then. Exactly. Oh, man, yeah. But out of love, and this is what true discipline is. Out of love. Alright, stop there, stop there, stop there, stop there. Okay, now I gotta turn up the pressure a little bit because you're not listening to me. Right. Yeah. You're correct. You disagree. Mm -hmm. So their issue was not rain. Their issue was revival. Mm -hmm. Their needs were not material. Their issue was spiritual. Yes. And so he prayed for their hearts to be turned back to him again. Uh -huh. Now now notice the wording at verse 37. The end of verse 37. And that you, that thou, uh -huh. has turned their heart. Because nobody can do that. That's right. Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Nobody can change a person's heart but the Lord. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a parent, we can shape our children's behavior. Yeah. They knew how to act in front of us. They knew how to act when we were not around. That's behavior. Yeah. Only God can turn a person's heart back to him again. Yep. Uh, Adrian Rogers, I used to listen to him all the time. He may have died seven, eight, nine, ten yeah. years ago. I still have a lot of his sermons on my computers at home. It was, he was instrumental in me growing. He gave me wonderful examples. That yes. I, I still recite some of them in, today, mm -hmm. in today's time. And he was telling a story, I believe it was in Florida, he was preaching a revival. That's when revival used to be five days. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now it's just a little 30 minute thing out the church sometimes. But yeah. when he would pray, he was doing a revival. And every day he would pray, and every day it just was less and less and less people. And he was like, Lord, oh, is there something going on? And he prayed to that last night, he, as he tells the story, it was almost nobody in revival. And he was just like, so, and it was raining very hard. Maybe because of the rain, people didn't come to church. Well, he's done. He said he'd walk out the pulpit just feeling all bad as a young preacher, get in his car, driving down the street, and it's traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Well, he sees a fire truck, an ambulance, and everybody stopping. He said, well, they go rub so and so. Man, they go so so and so. They're, all the people that were at that church that were coming to revival, they're out here standing in the rain because a house had caught fire. Mm -hmm. And what do people do when there's a wreck? When there's everybody, everybody wants to slow down and look and see, see what's going on. And he said, they would rather stand in the rain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to watch a fire yeah. than come to church and catch fire. Yeah. Yeah. He said, there's something wrong with that right there. Yeah. Only revival can reshape the heart, reshape yeah. the priorities. Only God can turn your heart back to him again. Yeah. And guess what? That takes time. Yeah. It took time to get you away from it. And guess yeah. what? Sometimes it takes time to get you right back to where you were, and he can even still get you further. Mm -hmm. And so he prayed for their hearts.
to be turned back to him again. He prayed for revival and not for rain because God knew that their needs were spiritual yeah. and not material. Mm -hmm. And Matthew 6 and 33, we probably all know it. See ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah. And all these things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. They also need to receive their repentance. Repentance. Yeah. Because yeah. Unless they're thinking, they can't turn back to God. Now listen, she's she looking at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so look at verse 39. No, no, no. You're doing good. You, you, you're right on track. Yeah. And when all the people saw it, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Let me go to verse 38. 39 is what we're going to do. And after the, at the end of his prayer, verse 38 says, Then the fire of the Lord fell. It's just one random fire. This was fire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It consumed the burnt off sacrifice. It consumed the wood. It consumed. Now I've never seen fire so hot. They are burn up stones and rock. Your, your fireplace is mainly made out of rock yeah. to contain the fire. <coughs> it wasn't just normal fire. It consumed the stones <laughs> and the dust. Yeah. Oh, nah, this is hot now. That's hot. And it licked up the water. Not to mention the 12 barrels of water they put on the wood to start the thing. Yeah. So what is this saying to us? This is saying to us that this fire failed in abundance. This fire fell giving overwhelming evidence who was the one God they should serve. Mm -hmm. yes. If their reason for being there, which it was, was whichever God answered by fire, this wasn't a little, you know, the little, little fire you like to, to start your uh, it's, really, <laughs> it's supernatural. This was supernatural fire. Yeah. The Lord rained fire to show, all right now, you got no excuses. You got no excuses. Yeah. In, in Matthew chapter 3, Jesus goes to John the Baptist. John says, you need to be baptized me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to baptize. I'm not even worthy to unloose the sandals on your feet. Yeah. Jesus says, suffer it to be so for now to fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. When he lowered him in the water and he raised him out of the water, he baptized him in the Jordan River. Yeah. No sprinkling. Yeah. <laughs> Immersion. Yeah. That's what baptism means, to immerse. Yeah. But then the Lord spoke up. What did he say? This, this is you know, my son. son. We're We're on the so y'all got no excuses. Yeah. He, he started his public ministry. Don't act like you don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. I spoke up. The spirit descended like a dove, rested on him. Jesus is there. I'm speaking loudly, audibly. Clearly, yeah. you can hear me. You can see what's going on. You've got no excuses for what I already know you're going to do. And so here we can see the Lord showed in abundance. Now, what did the fire fall on? What did the fire consume and fall on? The sacrifice. Sacrifice. Oh. Stones. Stones. Stones, the wood. The wood, the dust. The water. The water. The water. Who should the fire have fallen on? The people. The people. Yeah. See, the, the bull, the altar, yeah. took the sacrificial judgment. The fire fell on the altar, on the sacrifice. That sacrifice, that altar, substituted because it should have been all of them people who worship in Baal. All of them should have been the ones that fire. Yeah. All of them should have been the ones that were consumed in a fire. That, and God knew what he was doing. It wasn't like the fire was just all over the place. It came directly yeah, to the is. right spot yeah. and consumed the right sacrifice. But it should have fallen on them. Yeah. We call that mercy. It's mercy. Like you would think it's like a Hebrew boy in the, in the uh, furnace. It was hot and yeah. the people put the it The people who threw them in there, they got consumed. Yeah. But see, they weren't touched. So, so God was still taking care of them. Then mm -hmm. they hot-fired them. Good still point. burning. Yeah, good point. And, and when they, when Nebuchadnezzar called them out, he said, now, I thought I put three in. Yeah, I can see four. Look like it's four. <laughs> <laughs> and when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Yeah. They closed them. The clothes uh -huh. were, and the only thing that was burned off of them is what the world put on, the chains. Okay. So we can see this is that substitution to where mm -hmm. on Calvary's cross, mm -hmm. 
should have been me, should have been you, yes. should have been all of us. Yes. But Jesus took our place. Mm -hmm. And then to your point, Sister Belly, verse 39, and when all the people saw it, they fell on them. They fell on their faces. Yeah. And they said, when they all bowed down, the Lord, mm -hmm. he is the God. The Lord, mm -hmm. he is the God. Mm -hmm. Repent. Oh. We wrong. Yeah. Now, as we'll look at further in our following lessons. Okay, it's one thing to talk to talk. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta walk to walk. Mm -hmm. right. All these prophets are there. Gotta do something about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's good, it's good right now, but as you read further, we gotta eliminate this. You gotta get the sin out your life. One thing to say, I'm so sorry for the wrong I did, but then you keep doing it. Right. Yeah. You're not really sorry. Exactly. Y'all like, y'all remember who was it used to get spiked? I don't know. Yeah, man, I ain't talking about that tap on the head. Like, you mean with it? <laughs> 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 Pick y'all switch and don't come back with a little. See, see, country folks, they really have it good in the sense of. Well, what y'all have? See, in the city, we get straps. <laughs> we got that. Look, Kimbo, we got that too. No, no, no. We got that too. Barbers you got metal straps. Oh, you got you got uh, military straps. And... <laughs> <laughs> so we don't say they got straps. They say we go, they ain't gonna pick up the switch. I don't know. They they pretty good with the switch now. I don't know. I don't know. Never had a switch. The braided switch is what gets me. Oh no, the braided. The braided switch. I remember sometimes you know you, you get that spanking and you say you sorry. You just saw when you got caught. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And you saw you wouldn't have kept doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You saw you wouldn't have did it again. Did it again. Yeah. That's why we're here right now. And so if we're truly repentant, the true repentance is followed by a decisive attempt with God's grace and God's power to remove that which got you in trouble in the first place. Yeah. That's real. Now, now keep in mind, repentance is not penitence. It's not I did one bad thing, I'm going to do five good things to overact. No, 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 no. Repentance is not just grief. Nothing wrong with feeling remorseful or feeling wrong. You should feel that. But feeling sorry about sin and not doing anything about it, you keep continuing when you're not really sorry. Yeah. If you are truly repenting, it, it, it breaks your heart because you know you broke God's heart. It saddens you because you look at how far you have drifted away from him. And then, because you don't like this, Lord, this is not the life for me I want to change. Now, think about this. Look at what they could have avoided mm -hmm. if they would have did this three years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at all the yeah. people who may have died in the famine. Mm -hmm. All the destruction to the crops. Mm -hmm. All of the disease. All of the sickness. All of the death that could have been avoided. If you just would have did what you knew you should have did on the front end. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. But Satan specializes in making the way of the transgressor look like so much fun. <laughs> Boy, it looks good. He, he can take rat poison and put the chocolate ice and the ca candle on it and make you think it's a cake. Yeah. But our point is, is that if they would have done this, and then just, just our own personal lives. Look at the wounds and the scars, emotional scars, maybe even physical wounds we had to go through when we did something we know we shouldn't have did in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just backtrack to the beginning. I never would have, I never would have experienced fill in the blank. Yeah. And so even though now, 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 now listen, it's good that you get there at any time. Amen. So it's good that you get there at any point in your life. But the quicker you jump off that thing, the less pain and scars you will have to look back and remember. Mm -hmm. So they fell on their faces and they oh I'm sorry. Lord you're the God. <laughs> Lord Lord you're in the, not Baal. Yeah. Now I'm gonna give y'all a preview. Somebody turn to chapter 19. We're gonna close with it. Chapter 19. Which mm -hmm. verse? Verse one. Oh and Ahab told Jezebel, now he rewarded her, give the king, all that Elijah had done, and how he had slain all those false prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, yes. So let the God do to me more also, if I make not 
thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow. The same folk you killed today, you got 24 hours. I'm going to do it. Now, wait a minute. He didn't say nothing about it. Have you the wrong God? Yeah. <laughs> Fire came down from heaven. It consumed the dust, the stones, the water, the wet, the wet sacrifice. They put 12 minutes of water with it. None of that came out. He still was dead set, hardened in his seat. Mm -hmm. A hard head make what? I'm behind. The Bible has a word to describe when you continue to push past all of the roadblocks that God sets up to prevent you from seeing out of his love and grace and mercy for you. When you push past it constantly, the Bible calls it rebellion. Mm -hmm. So now we have another confrontation we can say. You versus God. Let's see who we're going to win. Mm -hmm. Let me know how that worked out for you. God said, don't do what you said. No, I'm going to do it. Yeah. God puts up roadblocks. You're going to push them. You're going to kick that stuff down. Keep on. Let's see who we're going to win. Mm -hmm. God will win every time he's on. God's been in business a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And business is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. If we get ready to close, uh, as I say, let's remember to pray for the Jones family. Uh, certainly want to remember to pray. Uh, Sister Morris is awful. Amen. Understand that he's been moved to a room by the ICU now. Good. Amen. Certainly want to pray for Dr. Brown, Reverend Brown. You know, yeah. uh, surgery went fine. Uh, I told him at the beginning of the Bible study, I heard his voice. He got some, he got some strong medication in him right now. <laughs> <laughs> he told him better than ever that one of us. Don't say that right now. He's, He's, I don't think he's going to remember talking to me, to be honest. Pass this. He's still at the hospital. He's, he's still at the hospital. Yes, he was. Okay. I think right. Sister Catherine was still up there, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, if y'all don't mind, let's have us to close and prayer. Give up here. Amen. And Dick and Daniel, would you mind giving us our closing prayer? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just another day that you allow us to be a part of. Thank you for the privilege of being able to come to this house and study your word and be able to go to the vineyards and be more effective Christians and all day and night. And that's what we pray again for those who are sick, those who are going to serve God. We know what your age is. And so, as always, we put everything in your hand. Yes, sir. God, as we prepare to go back home in a different destination, guide us home safely. Yes. Keep us, hold us in your hand of mercy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.